So it looks like the mythical, mystical, one ring serialized card that Hasbro placed randomly into collector edition booster boxes for its latest Magic the Gathering expansion set based on Lord of the Rings has been found. Um, for those of you that have been living under a rock for the past few days, or maybe the past few weeks, it was found up in Canada, and the card was already sent to PSA for grading. It came back a uh, PSA 9. The particular individual that located or found the card or discovered it, however you want to word it, does not want his or her identity known. And to be fair, I don't blame that particular person. So I do want to give kudos for that particular individual for staying quiet, staying private for this happening. Um, it looks like to me, everything that I'm reading online, this particular individual did everything correct. Um, they found the card, they sent it off to be graded. They actually did hire a legal team to pretty much field offers for this particular card. So in my opinion, they're doing everything that they should be doing to protect their interests and protect their identity why they try to see if they do want to sell this particular card for the current bounties that have been placed on finding this particular item. And for those unaware, the latest bounty is, I think, $2 million at present time. Now, if it was me, I would sell it. I would have no problem letting go of that card for $2 million. Because again, when I invest long-term in antiques and collectibles, I look for true organic collectability and I look for an element of scarcity. Now you can argue this particular mythical, mystical one ring card has both of those elements attached to it at present time. But I would tell you most of that particular attachment is based on hype. It's not based on genuine collectability. For instance, let me use this as an example. For those of you unaware, the Wall Street Journal actually analyzed the odds of locating this particular card. And they came up with the odds of finding this card were 0.00003%. So literally, you probably had a better chance of winning the Powerball lottery or getting struck by lightning two to three times in the same day than pulling this particular mystical one ring card. Now, before I go any further, I have to tell you, I am not a fan of mass-produced scarcity. And make no mistake, even though there's only one of these cards in existence in entirety, this card was produced out of mass-produced scarcity. It was basically a marketing gimmick that Hasbro came up with that they knew Timmy's, Kimmy's, and Poindexter's would flock to pre-ordering and buying the collector edition booster boxes for this new magic set in hopes of finding this particular card. That's why some of you reached out to me via email asking if you should purchase these collector edition booster boxes and what advice did I give you? I said, do not buy these collector edition booster boxes before this card is found. And the reason why I told you that is before this card was found, these particular collector edition booster boxes were selling on the secondary market for over $500 a box. Now, to be fair, to be fair, I understand there's a lot of Magic the Gathering enthusiasts, collectors, maybe some speculators and investors out there that just want to own those particular booster boxes, the collector edition booster boxes. And I'm sure also there's other valuable cards in those particular booster boxes. But you need to understand, due to the perceived expected value of this mythical, mystical one ring card, the value of that booster box was pretty much pulled up by the fact that this particular card had yet to be found. Now that this card is found, pretty much what's going to happen is at some point, remember, we're still in the hype of this particular Magic the Gathering set, but at some point, prices are probably going to start to pull back on that particular collector edition booster box. That doesn't mean in the future they can't go higher. Remember, collector edition booster boxes are their own form of mass-produced scarcity. Magic the Gathering, or Hasbro, I should say, Wizards of the Coast, they just limit production on them, meaning they only do one printing of the collector edition booster boxes. Now, because this is such a hot topic in the collectible card game genre at present time, we kind of have to do a deep dive into this because now that this particular card has been found, now that there are offers out there to buy this particular card for $2 million, the real fun begins, guys. And this is something that we really got to look at. What's going to happen to the value of this card after it is sold? 
assuming it is sold, let's assume that this particular private individual, he takes the $2 million offer and he walks away with his or her money and the particular dealer, collector, investor who spends the $2 million on this particular card, what happens next? That's the real question. And that's what I'm going to try to answer for you guys in this particular video. Because if this card is just sitting in a bank vault somewhere, or it's sitting in some type of well-protected climate-controlled storage location, let's word it that way, you need to understand that there's an opportunity cost for holding a collectible that is valued at $2 million, especially if you yourself pay $2 million to own it. Because we know at present time, just with what's going on in the macroeconomic environment that we find ourselves with interest rates where they are, you can get 5% on a brokerage money market account with no risk. Meaning if you take that $2 million instead and invest it, just put it in a brokerage account and have it sit there in a money market account that's paying you 5% in interest per year. Just without looking at compound interest. I'm not even taking into account compound interest. Just simple interest. That's $100,000 per year. This particular investor or this particular dealer or this particular individual that's willing to pay $2 million for this particular card is giving up. And that's what a lot of the Timmy's, Kimmy's, and Poindexter's don't understand. Right now, we're in a high interest rate environment. The era of easy money is over, guys. And we're not even comparing this to other investment opportunities that are out there. If we look at corporate bonds, if we look at just parking this $2 million in an S&P 500 index fund, the opportunity cost has to be taken into account. You know, so many people are reaching out to me right now. Sean, I don't understand why my vintage comic books have dropped so much in value. Sean, I don't understand. I was investing in vintage Magic the Gathering booster boxes. Why am I getting slapped in the face with a stale donut right now? Investors understand opportunity cost and they understand time value of money. That's why they're able to make money at investing. The Timmy's, Kimmy's, and Poindexter's that want to convince themselves that they're investing in collectibles, most of those individuals they just have an emotional attachment to these items. Then they try to justify buying these particular items at inflated prices usually because they want to tell themselves that they're investing in these items. You guys need to understand the difference if you want to be successful in these markets short term or long term. Now, I have done videos in the past. There is a different mindset at play if you are speculating on items in the antiques and collectibles trade, meaning you're going to the market, you're buying an item like this, maybe potentially at retail, and you're going to wait until they cease production on it, and you're going to flip it in the secondary market, basically hoping to just double your money. That's speculation. That is short-term speculation. Then you have people like me that put together a collection of very rare, valuable coins. We put it in a safety deposit box, and we hold it for decades on end. That's investment in the antiques and collectibles trade. If you want to invest in these markets long term, you need to understand the fundamentals. You need to understand business, economics, and finance. So if somebody buys this $2 million card, and let's say they hold it for two years, and then they decide to sell it, and they consign it to auction, and the end auction price of that particular card doesn't exceed past their initial investment, just looking at what they could be getting right now in a simple money market account attached to a brokerage fund, paying 5% interest in that two-year holding period, potentially they could have lost $200,000 alone, guys, just an opportunity cost. And again, that's assuming that rates stay the same. That's assuming that the Fed doesn't decrease or increase rates higher or lower. And that also assumes that they didn't choose another investment to put that money in because we don't know what the S&P 500 is going to do over the next two years. Nobody knows unless you have a crystal ball. So that's why we're having this conversation because a lot of people are really missing the core crux of this issue, which is it's great. This $2 million card has been found. This particular individual sells it. We have to follow the trajectory of this card throughout the next 5, 10, 15, 
20 years. Only then can we come back and say, you know, the person that paid $2 million for that item, they did really well. This is more of an abstract anomaly in the overall antiques and collectibles trade. Again, it's basically because this particular card utilizes mass produce scarcity. Now, in my opinion, in my opinion, if I was going to invest in a Magic the Gathering collectible for the long term, I would much rather have an Alpha Edition Black Lotus graded by PSA 9, 10 condition, preferably. I would much rather have that in my collection than this stupid, hype-driven One Ring card. But you guys are asking me for my take on it. I'm going to tell you, now that the card has been found, the real test begins. Because $2 million is a damn lot, a lot of money to lock up in one collectible, especially a collectible that was pretty much used to pretty much create hype centered around one particular Magic the Gathering expansion set. So this is where the true test begins, ladies and gentlemen. Now, before I end this particular video, I do want to also state this. It looks like a lot of high-profile dealers have made offers for this particular card. You had David Adams. You had the $2 million offer, I think, from overseas. And the reason why that's important, a lot of these companies, I think, want to own that particular card so they can tell their customers, so they can drum up their own hype and say, hey, we have the mythical One Ring card that is not currently for sale, but it, we're the home of that particular card. So it's going to work as an advertising gimmick for some of these companies to drum up hype for their own businesses. And to be fair, advertising in this day and age is expensive. So if you're somebody that has the means, if you're one of those high profile dealers and you are looking to do that by purchasing this card, I do get it. But still, it's still a lot of money to tie up in one card, especially a card that utilized mass produced scarcity. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. Thanks for watching and have a great day.